Hello, thank you very much for listening. My name is Jordi Ibern. I am a Reiki and meditation teacher and therapist based in Barcelona, Spain. In this episode, I would like to talk about two places in Japan that are linked to the Reiki history, Kyoto and Kurama. As you probably know, Reiki's birthplace is Kurama, a sacred mountain near Kyoto. I don't know if you have been to Japan, but I'm pretty sure that if you go for a vacation, not for work, you will visit Kyoto. It is for work, you will probably go to Tokyo. But for vacation, normally everybody goes to Kyoto. The first time that I went to Japan, it was with my wife, and we went to Kyoto, Kurama and Tokyo. Many Westerners, when they plan to visit Japan, they try to visit as many places as possible. The famous, maybe I only go once in life, it's very, very convincing. And of course, you can travel as you like and visit as many places as possible, if this is what you want. However, if you ask me, I will not recommend you to do that. To spend two or three days in a city like Kyoto is by far not enough. My advice If you go to Japan, take time to discover every place that you go. I have spent many weeks in Kyoto and I have the feeling that the city and the area around have so many beautiful, interesting and amazing places that I will need years to know them all. So when I went to Japan for the first time, I visited the places related to the Reiki history. I was very excited. I wanted to know more, to understand better and to feel Reiki where it was originated. If you haven't been to Japan, the first impression is quite an experience. Normally when you go, you land either Tokyo, one of Tokyo's airport, or at the airport of uh, Osaka. Kyoto does not have an airport. The closest airport to Kyoto is uh, Kansai, the one in Osaka. But Kyoto is one hour driving from Osaka, so it's not far. There are buses, trains and taxis that go from Osaka's airport to Kyoto regularly. However, if you want to spend a couple of nights in Osaka before going to Kyoto, it is absolutely worth it. I remember that we landed at 9 a.m. in the morning after a night flight. I, I, I was really excited to go to, to, to Japan for the first time and I thought I would be extremely tired of the night flight, the non-sleeping, the jet lag. But when we arrived in Kyoto, I felt so excited and happy that I convinced my wife to just walk and walk and we walked the whole day, all the morning with the suitcases. It was really, it was exciting. Japan in general is a country that has an interesting and unique combination of future and tradition. And Kyoto is to me the most incredible city in the world. And it has a perfect combination of both future and tradition. Kyoto has more than 1,500 Buddhist temples and Shinto shrines, traditional neighborhoods, wooden houses, tea houses, a really well-preserved geisha district, Zen gardens, museums. It's just astonishing. There are some places that are amassed in Kyoto, especially if you are interested in its culture and spirituality, and of course, if you are a Reiki practitioner. So let me talk first about some places to visit in the city before talking about Kurama, the final destination of any Reiki lover. First, in Kyoto, there's the Gion district and Igashiyama. Gion district is the Daisha district, and to me, the most attractive area in the city. You just want to get lost in the streets, and do it during the day and also during the night. The wooden houses, the small lanterns, the spirit of the place, they, they are just unique. You will find tea houses, maikos. Maikos are geisha apprentices. And if you're lucky, you might also see a geisha. In Gion, you have the feeling that you can travel in time and go to the Japan that many of us would like to know. It's somehow be being in the Japan of Usui Sensei. It's, for me, very special. 
in Gion at the end of the main street, when you're in the district, there's a main street that goes from the river to a park. At the end of this main street, before the park, there's Yasaka Shrine, which is a beautiful Shinto sanctuary. And then the Mayurama Park. Please, if you're there, just go and spend some time in the sanctuary and then in the park. Feel the place, walk the place. In Mariama Park, there are like many cherry trees. So if you go in the springtime, enjoy the sakura time, the cherry blossom. One of the cherry trees, you need to find it. It's a very old cherry tree. And it's famous, almost a celebrity for the Japanese. The Jion Weeping Cherry Tree. Don't forget to pay your respects to it. It is a special and a very old soul. Next to the Gion Weeping Cherry Tree, there's a lake. If you look at it from the tree, on your right side, you will see a coffee place, which is in a house with amazing views of the park. It's a really good place to make a stop, drink mindfully a cup of tea, and let the spirit of the city embrace you. Because Kyoto can be walked, visited, but mainly it needs to be felt. It's a city that you really want to feel. And if you want to understand Reiki, Zen, or the key, the energy, you need to feel Japan. Not just take pictures of or visit places. Japanese spirituality can be felt just walking mindfully on the streets and in the temples. So, from Maruyama Park, go with no rush, always with no rush, to Kiyomizu Dera one of the most known Buddhist temples in Kyoto and in Japan. The walk will be remembered, trust me. The area is extremely touristic for both Japanese and non-Japanese. Once you're there, you will understand why. Some of the best preserved traditional streets in Japan are there. Artisan shops, tea shops, traditional restaurants. If you like shopping, art and craft, this is paradise. The end of the walk is Kiyomizu Dera, probably the most visited temple in Kyoto. Even though the area is usually crowded, the temple keeps its deep spiritual feeling and you can just go around and find quiet places with amazing views of the city. There is another temple that I would recommend you to visit in Kyoto, the Silver Pavilion. It's a Zen temple that contains a statue of canon and a beautiful, beautiful garden. It is also a touristic place, but if it's your first time in Kyoto, trust me, visit it. The beauty of the temple and the garden are unique. In addition, next to the temple starts the Philosopher's Path, one of the loveliest walks in Kyoto. Many people walk only the first two or three hundred meters, they take a picture and then they go to visit something else. My advice, what next to the channel, the two kilometers of the path, the philosopher's path. And then just continue walking to Yasaka Shrine in Gion, to the Maruyama Park. You will enjoy one of the best mornings or afternoons in Kyoto. The area is very nice. And once you leave all the tourists and the people behind, you will find yourself in a tranquil, astonishing area with beautiful streets, Buddhist temples, Shinto sanctuaries, cherry trees. It's really beautiful. Again, easily you can feel that you travel in time there. I love walking the philosopher's path. I miss it a lot. <laughs> I normally do walking meditation there. It's just perfect for it. And another temple that I love to visit and I recommend you to go is Chionin, next to Maruyama Park. Chionin is the headquarters of the Jodo Shu, the pure land sect of Buddhism. And the main door of the temple is the biggest in Japan. The area is huge, so you can get happily lost in there. Do it. You won't regret it. Of course, there are like many more temples in Kyoto. And almost all of them are very interesting. But sadly, you cannot visit them all. Many friends, when they ask me about Kyoto, they ask me about Kinkakuji, the Golden Temple. They say that I never mention it when I, walk, uh, when I talk sorry, about Kyoto. 
Well, in the Golden Temple, you will find the best photo of Kyoto and probably of Japan. That's for sure. The temple is incredible. But in my experience, it is the only temple in Kyoto that I had the feeling of this is a touristic site more than a spiritual place. It's just my experience, of course. But I prefer to spend time in less known temples in Kyoto. And there are many. However, if you have time and you want to go, you will be shocked by its beauty as soon as you get there. The Golden Temple is stunning. In Kyoto, I also like to get lost near the Okazaki Park, not far from Gion District. In the park, you will find a huge tori. Tories are the Shinto doors. The, the doors that represent the separation between the sacred from the profane. You will find also there, I think there are like two or three museums and the Heian Temple, all of them worth of a non-rushing visit. And if you like yoga, you can go to the lovely Studio Bindu for a practice and maybe to have a coffee at the cafe Rokujian next to it. I love this cafe. They are all in the same area. And for the people who like chocolate, next to the Studio Bindu, you will find the best chocolate in Kyoto in a place called Nama Chocolate. But if it's lunchtime, please walk 10 more minutes and go to one of my favorite restaurants in Japan, Nishio Yatsushahi no Sato. I will leave all the names in the description, don't worry. Nishio Yatsuhashi no Sato is a traditional restaurant with a beautiful garden and a delicious menu. Gluten-free, vegetarian options, I'm pretty sure you'll love it. The garden is really amazing and the restaurant too. Still in Kyoto, if you want to have a Zen experience, and I think it's if you go there for Reiki, it's important to have this experience, then go to Shunkoin Temple, where you can stay, practice Zen meditation, calligraphy, enjoy a tea ceremony, everything in English. It is a good way to discover Zen in Japan. A very good way. And of course, you cannot go to Kyoto and not to visit Arashiyama and the famous bamboo grove. Arashiyama is an area next to Kyoto, known for the bamboo forest, the river and some temples. But to me, the best of Arashiyama is Yodofu Sagano. A traditional tofu restaurant with hundreds of Buddha statues and a beautiful Zen garden. Yodofu Sagano is my favorite restaurant in the world. Please do not miss it. Everything is Zen there. You understand Zen. Even eating is Zen there. I, I, I really love it. There are of course many, many more places to visit in the city of Kyoto. Many that I know and many that I don't know. But this podcast starts looking like a Lonely Planet podcast. And I love so much Japan that I could talk hours about places to visit. Let me mention just one more place that I like to visit when I go to Kyoto. Fujimi Inari. The Shinto mountain sanctuary with thousands of tori doors where you can climb up for hours. The place is extraordinary. It is one mountain considered sacred by the Japanese and the different pathways that go to the top of the mountain are full of hundreds of tories. The beginning of these paths are normally crowded, but once you walk one hour up, they are quite empty and it's wonderful. You'll find yourself alone in the middle of the mountain with all these stories. It's really beautiful. Fujimi Inari is dedicated to Inari, one of the Japanese gods. Inari is the god of rice and a patron of business. That is why it's so popular among the Japanese. Well, you like Reiki and you go to Japan, so you probably want to visit Kurama the birthplace of Reiki. Kurama is my favorite place in Japan. Just to go there from Kyoto is exciting. You have to take the metro and go to the last stop in the Keihan line, and then you change in uh, the Machi Yanagi. It's easier than the names. And once you're there, you switch to another line called Eizan line, and the last stop of Eizan line is Kurama. And the trip is really beautiful. It is like an old, beautiful train that first goes among the suburbs of Kyoto and then all of a sudden gets into a beautiful forest in the mountains. It is like taking you to another time and rhythm. 
When you get to Kurama Station, you will be in the village of Kurama. A really, really small village with just one long street and mountains on both sides. You walk straight, then turn left and you will find the entrance of Kurama. You will have to pay a small amount to get in the mountain, but it's really small. Once you pay, wash your hands and mouth in the fountain that is in the entrance and just go up and up and enjoy the walk. On the way, you will find a few huge cedar trees that are the kamis, the gods of the mountain. Do not forget to ask for permission to get there. It is their forest, not ours. The trees are nicely marked with a small ornament. You will not miss them. Just two minutes before reaching the main temple and the square with a strong energetic spot, which is marked on the floor in front of the main entrance of the old temple, just two minutes before there, there's another temple on the right. It is always open and there is normally empty, no one inside. You can go in and meditate as long as you need in the middle of Kurama. If you're lucky, maybe a Buddhist monk comes and recites the Heart Sutra or the Lotus Sutra just for you. The first group of Reiki students that I took there were practicing meditation when the monk came and started chanting. It was magical. When he finished, he showed us the hidden parts of the temple and explained many things. He goes there every couple of hours to recite the, the sutras. So if you're lucky, you'll, you'll meet him. In the main temple, just two minutes upstairs from this uh, small temple, you can rest, enjoy the astonishing views, buy incense and sit next to the energetic spot. But meditate inside of the temple is not as easy as it is in the temple downstairs. Because there are normally restrictions in the area that you can visit and not. There are also some workers who sell incense and other souvenirs and more people coming in and out. So it's not as calm as the one before. However, all the area around the main temple is full of places, places where, where you can sit and meditate. There are also some cherry trees, so if you go in springtime, you will enjoy a beautiful and magic landscape. Just remember, 100 years ago, in the very same place, a spiritual man, a Buddhist monk named Usui Sensei, spent 21 days in this mountain before he reached the state of Satori and founded Reiki. You are in a very special place when you're there. Please do not be in a hurry and spend time there. Breathe it, feel it. It will transform you. My advice, before going, buy a bento box for lunch and you can eat there and spend the day without any rush. If once you're in the main temple and you want to continue hiking up, there's a path that continues just behind the main square, next to the big bell of the temple. In about 20 or 30 minutes, you will be on the top of the mountain. There, you can see the famous roots of the trees that are believed to make Usui Sensei hurt his foot. We don't know for sure if this story is true or not, but the roots out of the ground are really interesting. And it is a good place for eating your bento box. On the way to the top, and if you continue to the other side going down, you can find some small Shinto shrines and temples, and also small cabins for pilgrims. In one of them, Sui Sensei spent the 21 nights before his enlightenment, before his satori. If you keep going, at some point you will reach the village of Kibune, a beautiful place on the other side of Kurama's mountain. On summertime, all the restaurants in Kibune put some wooden platforms on the river and serve meals there. It is an unforgettable experience. A bit expensive though, but unforgettable. If you go back to Kurama, you go down to Kurama village. When you're in the, in the, in the village, walk the main street until the end of it. And you will find Kurama Onsen a special spa hotel where you can enjoy the traditional Japanese baths, indoors and outdoors. Outdoors with the great views of Kurama Mountain. 
Then you can rest in the resting and meditation room that they have. And then enjoy a traditional Japanese meal before taking the train back to Kyoto. Well, if you are interested, you can also spend the night in Kurama Onsen. But you will have to make a reservation well in advance. They have not so many rooms and it's quite popular, so not easy. Kurama is to me a place that needs to be felt. Once you are there, you really understand the magic of nature, Reiki and the power of healing that the place has. Kyoto and Kurama are not only important for the history of Reiki, but also for understanding the spirituality of the Reiki path. If you're lucky and you go to Japan, please visit them. And if you like reading, there are two books that I would recommend you to read before going. One is a novel of Kawabata, a Nobel Prize winner, and the book is called The Old Capital, a beautiful story that happens in Kyoto in the first half of the 20th century. The other book is from Alex Kerr, and it's called Another Kyoto, a book that will drive you into the fascinating city of Kyoto. I love these two books. And I think with the great Yasunari Kawabata and Alex Kerr is a good way to finish this podcast. So thank you very much for listening. I really appreciate that you are on the other side. Thank you. I hope we meet on the next episode. Have a lovely day or night. Bye-bye.